Day 28. Half Measure. Joel chapter 2. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering, unto the Lord your God? Jeremiah the prophet said, And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom, that she defiled the land, and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet, for all this her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly, or a counterfeit turning, saith the Lord. And the Lord saith, <clears throat> and the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Are you in a backslidden state? Are you turning to the Lord with your whole heart, or only part of your heart? Is your repentance and sorrow for your sin just half-hearted? Are you an almost Christian? Pastor Thomas Watson wrote, True turning reproves those who are but half-turned. And who are these? Such as turn in their judgment, but not in their practice. They cannot but acknowledge that sin, like Saturn, has a bad aspect and influence, and will weep for sin. Yet they are so bewitched with it, that they have no power to leave it. Their corruptions are stronger than their convictions. These are half-turned, almost Christians. Acts 26, verse 28. They are like Ephraim, who was a, a cake baked on one side and dough on the other. Hosea 7, 8. Your weeping and your trouble over your sin will not merit you heaven. It will not convince God. It will not be the ground of your salvation. You must hate sin as sin, because that it is offensive to the Heavenly Father that you love. And this must be grounded in the person and work of Jesus Christ, His righteousness, His might, His merits. It must be the result of a cleaving to Christ by faith and faith alone. He goes on, They are but half-turned, who turn only from gross sin, but not have no intrinsic work of grace. They do not prize Christ or love holiness. It is with civil persons as with Jonah. He got a gourd to defend him from the heat of the sun, and thought that he was safe, but a worm presently arose and devoured the gourd. So men, when they are turned from gross sin, think their civility will be a gourd to defend them from the wrath of God. But at death there arises the worm of conscience, which smites this gourd, and then their hearts fail, and they begin to despair. Are you trusting in your morality to be right with God, your civil behavior? You have given up, perhaps, gross and open sins. Does this mean that you are worthy of heaven? Does this mean that you deserve heaven? That God is obligated to save you, to reward you? Well, this kind of mindset will only bring despair and failure. Trust not in your own performance, or your own merit, or your own morality. They are but half-turned, who turn from many sins, but are unturned from some special sin. There is a harlot in the bosom they will not let go, as if a man should be cured of several diseases, but has a cancer in his breast which kills him. True turning reproves those whose turning is as good as no turning, who expel one devil and welcome another. They turn from swearing to slandering, from profuseness to covetousness. Like a sick man, they that turns from a burning fever to a quatrain fever, such turning will turn men to hell. Even if you gave up every sin in the world, but embrace and cherish lust, you will be turned to hell. 
No whoremonger and adulterer inherits the kingdom of God. Ephesians 5 5. Sin is the plague of plagues. Keeping just one special sin will still destroy you. Just as if you were healthy in every area of your life, completely free of every disease except cancer, it will still drag you to death. What about grace, you may be asking? Doesn't God save wretched, undeserving sinners that still are filled with weaknesses and unbelief, many doubts, struggling, wrestling throughout their whole lives, including the best of saints? Yes, indeed, he does. But there is a big difference between a professing Christian cherishing sin and fighting sin. St. Augustine said, For grace is given not because we have done good works, but in order that we may be able to do them. Grace makes us able to be holy. A true saving faith is proven by good works, James 2, a love for Christ and a desire to do his will. And so the true Christian fights and wars against sin. They may struggle, they may fall, but they ultimately will have victory through the power of God by the merit of Christ, by the work of the Spirit. So if you are in a state of almost Christianity, of a dead half-turning, a dead faith, what is the solution? Are you without hope? Is it too late? No, my friend. And rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. God will turn away his wrath from you in great kindness if you sincerely go to him for mercy, with a genuine heart for him and for righteousness. He is willing to receive the chief of sinners. He delights in forgiveness. Stop being half-hearted, but full-hearted. Stop holding back in your faith and walk. May the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be your all in all, your supreme good and treasure. And may this treasuring of the Lord, rejoicing in the Lord, result in the poison and folly of sin being extremely bitter and hateful to you. Till sin be bitter, Christ will not be sweet. And tomorrow the topic will be full measure. See you then.